I'll just open by saying that um, <clears throat> we're pleased that um, Michelle Carter has, has completed her term here. Uh, she was very, very active in programs from the time that she started. She got involved in education programs. She got involved in um, um, our <coughs> work program. She had a job inside the facility. And uh, some have asked me previously, how did she assimilate? And um, I think by keeping busy the way she did, she was able to um, integrate very, very well in the Women's Center and, uh, and earned the good time that she was, um, most of the good time she was allowed to get by staying busy and being involved uh, with the various programs. So um, she has completed her sentence. She's, um, she's met her obligations for her, for her good time. And now she, as you know, she will be hopefully um, reintegrating successfully given the opportunities she had while she was here. And again, I would say that she was a model inmate uh, for the entire time that she was here. And I will open it up to any questions if anyone has any questions. What makes you use the words model inmate? What made it what she was like? Well, we will have a model inmate uh, would be someone we would consider to be um, free of any sort of disciplinary issues, someone who is focused on the rehabilitative process that we have here taking advantage of any programs that may be useful and uh, spending their time uh, doing, doing uh, productive things that we believe are really the, the essence of, of what corrections is all about. It's about, uh, we're, not, we're not here to punish people. That's been done by judges and juries. Our job when people come here and the most important thing that we can do to, for public safety is to make sure that people uh, have the programs available and then take advantage of them. And she did all of that. So, uh, when we say model inmate, we talk about uh, involvement in programs, no disciplinary issues, and um, she met that criteria for all of us. Sheriff, did you have any personal interactions with uh, Michelle Carter? And if so, what were those? I did not have any personal interactions with her. Was her early release in line with what other prisoners who may have had the same behavior in prison? Yeah, Michelle Carter's early release is based on state law. They're allowed up to 10 days, uh, good time per month. Uh, it has to be earned uh, according to categories. For example, if you were work, if you did some work in the facility, that's uh, you can earn up to two and a half days. If you work full time while you're here in the facility, you can earn up to five uh, five days a month. Then there's another uh, two and a half to five days you can earn within the educational uh, programs, and then there's another two and a half to five days you can earn um, in the uh, other al alternative programs, the substance abuse programming, religious retreats, things like that. So, but combined only up to a total of 10 days. Was there any concern, you know, being considered a high profile inmate, was there any concern when she entered in February and did you experience any issues with other inmates and Michelle Carter? Well, with regards to high profile inmates or high profile cases, I, I think you all know we, we've already had uh, experience with that with Aaron Hernandez. And I will tell you, um, in any prison, when you have a high profile case or a high profile person that comes in, you always have to be aware of two things, very important. One is their mental state when they enter a facility because of the notoriety and the, in, in the case of press coverage, it's, uh, it's a little more difficult and we have to be very, very sensitive and careful about how they're acclimating from a mental health standpoint, uh, as well as we have to be concerned about the security of the environment, uh, that no one inside the facility who's being incarcerated with that individual would um, perhaps try to raise their notoriety by, by doing something uh, to harm that, that individual. So we've, um, you know, we've had great experience that I have, a, I have an excellent staff, great superintendent who's constantly uh, looking at those things ahead of time, making sure that um, to the point where if someone were a high profile person like an Aaron Hernandez and we made sure we knew who was going to be assigned to that unit as well as had protocols in place if, for example, if he started to call somebody by their first name, the superintendent would immediately transfer that officer out so that the familiarity wouldn't start to, to enter in. So we get down to that finite sort of uh, 
examination of high-profile cases when they come in. But the mental health and the, and the, the, the um, security issues are critically important to us. Could you repeat that again? Sure, yeah. What sort of considerations or what, what, what sorts of things do you think about for this release specifically uh, that you maybe will not do for you know, all your other routine releases that will not garner this level of interest? Well, first of all, you know, when someone's completed their sentence and they're being released, obviously in a case like this where there's so much media here, obviously we have to make sure that uh, they have the ability to be able to move freely and not be interrupted in, in their efforts to, to now start their, their new life when they're leaving the facility. But at the same time, keep a balance with um, the interests that the press have, and, and rightfully so, to be able to cover uh, the case as they've been doing all along. So we try to balance that, the, the uh, protections of the person leaving and the privacy as well as um, the public interest and the <coughs> responsibilities that you all have uh, as the press. Sure. You said that uh, you didn't have yeah. any. Yeah. Well, just, one, just quickly, can you tell us what a normal day would be like for Michelle Carr after she had a summary? How long was she in the cell for? The normal, the normal uh, day for, for Michelle Carter would have been to uh, obviously have her meals. She did uh, depending on the program she was in, she would get up. And, uh, and she really liked to stay busy. She was very, very busy and, and, and looked for every program she could possibly get into, which was great. Uh, she was, uh, she did have cellmates, not initially, of course, because that's our, that's our assessment period. And then, uh, depending if an inmate, one of her cellmates left, she could be by herself until another cellmate was assigned. But, but by and large, it was a mixed bag. Mostly, uh, she had a cellmate, but it, it just depended on the people coming in. Sure. Yes. Sure. You said uh, uh, you had no personal interaction with the role. Uh, what about your staff? What, is it, what did your staff tell about you know, what, what she was like? Well, as I said, uh, the staff that, that, that were working with uh, Michelle Carter on a daily basis um, reported that she was uh, a model inmate. They didn't have any discipline issues. She really, um, in fact, one of the things that uh, she really liked doing was gardening. Obviously, this time of year wasn't uh, really a great time of year to do it, but she really enjoyed the gardening part. and. Um, and so they got to know a little bit about what she uh, preferred to do. But the thing that they said uh, that was very, I think, revealing was that she was very interested in getting in as many programs as she possibly could, and she did. Sure. You said that uh, her, her release wasn't according to the state law. was within uh, the state law. Do you have a message for her Conrad Boyce family? I know the grandfather reportedly said that. Uh, you know, they're, they're in dismay. They feel like what the grandfather said, quote, that you should serve the rest of her term. Do you have a message for the family? That I should serve the rest of the term? Yeah. I mean, that's what the grandfather said. Um, yeah. You know, <clears throat> you know, I feel for the family. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very sad case. Um, I understand the grandfather's um, emotion. Um, what I would, would say to the family that our, we, we look at all of that, our staff do. I mean, we're first and foremost, we look at the human elements of what go on here, even for inmates that are here that maybe we're, you know, have some real issues, but our staff understand that some of them might be sitting on a stoop in a diaper and a t-shirt at three years old, watching their parents push drugs up and down the street and probably never had a shot in life uh, to begin with. Nobody showed them the, the, you know, how far to push on the edge of the bubble. And our, our staff get that. That's why we work with these individuals to try, as difficult as it is when they have such established um, behaviors for so long, that we, we try to retool them. And it's, um, it's what we do. It's why I'm so proud of our staff here and what, what they do committed to these individuals. But at the same time, we can't ignore and um, we, we certainly understand and feel for the victims um, associated with these types of things. And, and, and I, I really feel for, for the Roy family and what, the, what they must be going through. And in the end, I suppose my, my answer would be that we can't, we don't dictate what the sentences are going to be or the punishment. That's not uh, something that we would have anything to do with, the courts do. But when people come here, uh, I think there is every expectation that while they're here, 
that they should be focused on things that are going to be helpful uh, when they leave here so that perhaps never again those types of things could happen. We can't undo what's already done, but we can do everything we can while people are in our custody to try to make sure it never happens to anyone else. And again, our, my entire staff certainly feel for the, for the Boyd family. And to clarify that point, which you mentioned before, it may be get out earlier in good time as the state mandate, as the state law. Right. Uh, correctional policy. Yeah, that's all inmates according to state law. Right. Is there any idea what Ms. Alfaro is going to be doing on her staff? I don't. I haven't had any conversations with her, um, and I don't know that she's conveyed any of that to any of our staff. I think she, <clears throat> as far as we're concerned, we know that she participated in programs. We hope that some of those programs will be useful for her in, in uh, getting on a good trajectory in life. Uh, but as far as I know, that hasn't been conveyed. Chairman, did she have access to mental health counseling while she was here? Oh, sure. All, our, all of our, our inmates have access to mental health counseling. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, we have a, a really an excellent mental health staff here that are very, very focused on uh, when people come in, they have a mental health screening. Depending on what that screening says, then they will make a determination as to whether or not people need to be seen on a regular basis by mental health or whether or not um, they're clear on the mental health side and there really are no issues. But, but they're very attentive to that. We have um, quite an investment in the mental health side because that's become a big problem in, cor in corrections all over the country, the mental health, pro mental health problems across the country. And the other point I would make about that is um, we have become, sadly, in this country and in, in Massachusetts, We've become the mental health institutions uh, when they were closed down by, by uh, Governor Dukakis. And, um, and it's only gotten worse. Uh, even with the mental health institutions open, if they were still open, they would be, have seen a whole uh, turn in the way mental health has declined because of the drug issues that are going on. I don't know what the answer to that, but as as uh, as it would have been determined and needed by the mental health experts. Chairman, could you walk through the walk us through the process and uh, her last um, the last thing she did here? Well, the last thing she I'm not gonna be funny about it, she walked to her car, but 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 uh but uh, she actually the last thing would have been to um, you know have her her uh, release papers signed and then she would have um, um, gathered her belongings, which probably were put together this morning, and then um, she was uh, escorted out to a waiting vehicle, and that would have been her last uh, time here. Are those two bags all her belongings? Yes. I know you're hearing a lot of the second hand from the staff that dealt with her every day. Do you get any sense that she had remorse? I, I, I wouldn't know that. Uh, it's, and, and I don't know that our staff would either. Um, I don't know that she ever talked about her case, and we don't usually talk about people's cases with them. Do they have access to Oh, oh, you're speaking about do they can they look at newspapers or television? Yeah, they can. Any other questions? Well, thank you all for being here, and um, you all have a great day. I know it's been a long one for you. Have a great one. Thank you, Sheriff. One on one, you find me.